Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Taurus new moon at 18 degrees and two minutes on May 7th, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us start to expand our understanding of our multidimensional self and our perspective of who, who we truly are. So welcome to this video. Here, you will receive three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the new moon chart. And also at the end, I'll give you three questions to work with should you want to integrate this new moon energy in Taurus some more. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. This new moon in Taurus is trying the Lyra constellation. And Lyra has been highlighted a lot the past couple of months. Uh, the Lyra constellation is one of the constellations that we associate with human galactic heritage the most. So I'm not surprised that... You know, the new moon here is giving us a reminder of Lyra and its influence on us at this time through the trine that is in place here at this new moon. The ruler of this new moon is Venus, and Venus is already at 10 degrees of Taurus. And the influence of Venus on this new moon is very um, influential when it comes to bringing in this welcoming feeling, this connection to earth, to flora and fauna, uh, and the reminder how important that is in our own experience in terms of balance, uh, hope, uh, connection. So I'll talk more about that in the theme one coming up. This new moon is speaking of that we are all welcome here. We are all here on earth for a reason. And that welcoming, opening feeling is one that's very prominent after many months now of working with uh, our own limitations and, and clearing and releasing out uh, resistance and uh, things that we are have been ready to to let go of. This new moon is a guiding uh, force, if you will, a gentle guiding force for the future, where we are invited to step into more of an energy of grace, uh, making space for ourselves and others in a different way that haven't been done before in our lives. And I feel that this new moon has a quality of um, future to it as well. A very futuristic energy is present and it has to do with the unseen. We are working very much with earth element in the sign of Taurus, of course, but there's also an element of water. And I'll talk more about that in the second theme as well, where that water influence is coming from. Now, we also have uh, a call within this new moon to get out of our own way because uh, we have been um, so focused on resolving our things in our lives and in our environment that is not working and um, have made lots of strides to release that and making it kind of visible, but also um, transmuting that energy. This new moon is one of stepping into uh, ourselves as an open channel to creation. And that requires us to step out of our own way. And that is a um, very beautiful reminder of the potential of the future, where we're going with uh, our reality and our experience of the reality here on earth and in our lives. So I feel that this is really a um, very um, caring and nurturing new moon in the sense of allowing ourselves to feel safe, safe in the sense that we can let go within 
to open that channel for what we truly want to create next. This new moon is also reminding us that we cannot use the uh, old measuring stick uh, of how we have done things in the past. There is a whole new, uh, not even a measuring stick coming in. It actually is a sphere or a spiral, not a stick that is very linear. Uh, what we are asked to uh, step into and relate to is the multidimensional aspects that comes with the unseen and things that we cannot see, such as utilizing our intuition, utilizing our uh, abilities that we are now awakening. So ways that we have used before that are tried and true and we feel comfortable with are no longer necessary. We are asked to come up with new, completely innovative uh, approaches to things that we want to create. So what does that mean for you? Um, how can you step into something completely different that feels new and that feels fresh and that feels exciting? So at this new moon, we're invited to open ourselves up even more, living as much as we can without resistance to allow us to create from being an open channel, basically, and, and notice what comes through us. Uh, we are also invited to use practices that we may not have tapped into, such as sound, such as as music, as ways to help us stay more balanced. This new moon is taking place in the second deacon, which is the mental domain between 10 and 19 degrees uh, of each sign is the, the second deacon. And what that tells us is that, again, we are asked to be very open mentally and letting uh, whatever wants to come through us cha be channeled through us in terms of creation. Before we take a look at the new moon chart, I'd like to share what the three energetic themes are. The first theme I've named Earth Transformation, and the second theme I've named Authentic Self-Expression, and the third theme I've called Ramp Up Your Spiritual Gifts. <laughs> so let's take a look at the new moon chart next. So here we have the new moon chart at 18 degrees and two minutes is very crowded and busy there in both Aries and Taurus at this time. And the new moon is trining Lyra Shiliak at 19 degrees of Capricorn. There's a lot going on with the Lyra constellation overall with a lot of aspects, but the new moon is closest in orb with Lyra Shiliak. And Shiliak as a fixed star is associated very with a very Venusian energy that has to do with connection to nature, connection to our environment, but also how we stay balanced. Lyra Shelyak also infuses a very loyal and protective energy. So this trine here is very supportive and is inviting us to connect with our environment, with nature, and value that as we um, are finding ways to stay more balanced. So the new moon also is sextiling Saturn there in Pisces at 17 degrees, conjunct the fixed star Archanar in the Eridanus constellation. We'll talk more about this in theme one coming up. We talked about Eridanus and the fixed star Archanar in the lunar eclipse video a couple of videos ago. And if you, I'm not going to talk uh, specifically about Archanar today, but if you want to go back to that lunar eclipse video, uh, I'll put the timestamp for that below. The ruler of this new moon is Venus and Venus is already at 10 degrees of Taurus there and opposite the fixed star Acrux at 12 degrees of Scorpio. Venus is also making a trine, a beautiful trine to Lyra constellation and the fixed star Alatfar at 10 degrees of Capricorn. And we'll talk more about Acrux and uh, Venus's journey here in theme two coming up. 
So building on Venus's rulership here at this new moon in Taurus, there are a number of powerful conjunctions happening throughout the month of May that are linking the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that took place on April 20th with this new moon on May 7th. And I'll walk you through what I see here. The sun is going to catch up to Uranus on May 13th. And this is uh, the invitation that we're uh, getting where something is going to be uh, required to be seen from a different perspective. Something comes in from the left field that we may not have thought of. Maybe we're approaching something from a, a completely new direction. And that is really when it comes into uh, a highlight in our life. Now, if we move forward in May here, Venus is then coming to a conjunction with Uranus on May 18th. At the same day, within a couple of hours here, there is also a conjunction between the sun and Jupiter. So May 18th is a very powerful day. Uh, Venus's conjunction with Uranus is that ultimate expression and experience of unconditional love, in my perspective, because this electrifying energy, uh, it's a um, awakening, an epiphany from that has to do with uh, with love, inner love, inner wisdom. These two powerful conjunctions on the same day, within a couple of hours, that is something uh, magnificent. Uh, so pay attention to May 18th and put it on your calendar because notice what houses you have this conjunction. And both of these conjunctions are happening in the third deacon. So it, it has to do with our spiritual advancement at this time. From a galactic perspective, these conjunctions are happening in uh, opposition to the Centaurus constellation, and particularly Beta Centauri Hadar at 24 degrees of Scorpio, which is associated with unconditional love, the utopia of unconditional love. And it's a strong reminder that what truly is infusing us at this time, it's and when we are channeling unconditional love without resistance, we are ultimate creators. So the very strong message around this new moon is to open up even more, to allow unconditional love flow through us with as little resistance as possible. And if this wasn't enough... Venus is then conjuncting Jupiter on May 23rd, and that's the ultimate expansion of love. So I thought these 10 days between May 13th and May 23 are extremely powerful for a spiritual awakening, leaning into unconditional love, allowing unconditional love and universal wisdom to flow through us. So with that in our back pocket, let's now take a look at theme number one that I called Earth Transformation. So here we have the first theme that I've called Earth Transformation. And at this new moon, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of uh, influence coming through from the Lyra constellation to us through First of all, the trine, the beautiful trine that we have with the new moon and the fixed star Shiliac, the Venusian energy that is helping us to focus more on connection to earth, connection to nature, and being uh, grounded and in balance. But we also have uh, links here, and the, especially the squares to Lyra constellation from Mercury and Chiron and the North Node. And that is also our invitation to integrate the mind-body-soul connection at this time. And again, along the lines of opening up to being that channel for creation, type of energy, the free flowing um, life force, if you will. So what we have here is a 
strong highlight on the Lyra constellation. And I want to highlight also a minor grand trine, or we call it also a talent trine, that is between Lyra Sheliak at 19 degrees of Capricorn and that trine to the new moon at 18 degrees of Taurus and Saturn at 17 degrees of Pisces conjunct Archenar. This is suggesting to us a need for integration between body, mind, and spirit aspects of ourselves at this time. And at this new moon, eh, we are invited to set intentions for allowing that integration to happen. Saturn, also conjunct Archenar, is that free-spirited energy that we are invited to tap more into. And Saturn being uh, the one that presents us with our lessons in Pisces, it has to do with that letting the mind flow free, letting our emotions flow free, letting our energy flow free so that we can let go of limitations that we're putting our, on ourselves. This is um, flowing energy uh, with a trine and two sextiles that is presenting to us that integration opportunity between body, mind, and spirit. I want to go back to also highlighting that growth opportunity that we are presented with because of that square between Chiron and Mercury now conjunct in Aries there at 21 degrees and the square to the Lyra Ring Nebula at 20 degrees of Capricorn. The R Lyra Ring Nebula we've been talking about quite a lot, but it it may represent our uh, human galactic heritage and the struggles we have with uh, resolving polarity within ourselves, but also in our environment. With Chiron and Mercury there now conjunct, squaring the Lyra ring nebula, it's suggesting to us that we are ready to communicate these lessons and release that pain. Um, often we can also, through Mercury, have a learning experience. So now it's an opportune time to learn from that pain, learn from that resistance. What does it mean? What can I learn from that resistance that may be still residual and uh, ready to be released here at this new moon? I also want to bring in the North Node here at 15 degrees of Aries, squaring Lyra Vega. Lyra Vega is at 15 degrees of Capricorn, and this is the growth opportunity that shows us the direction forward, the North Node. Vega is associated with mysticism and spiritual practice, and this is a growth opportunity that we're invited to now to really bring in more of those practices that tap us into appreciating more of magic, appreciating more the awe of nature, let's say, uh, and other practices that we may want to ramp up now. Because this growth opportunity to heal and release is very prominent at this new moon. This energetic theme overall is taking the entire planet, Earth, into consideration. This new moon is encouraging us to have a strong bond with our environment, with nature, with the elements, because it's from here we can open up to that channel of life force, the natural universal wisdom that is always in flow here on planet Earth. And we're invited to increase our connection with that. So here we have the Lyra constellation. And we've talked about Lyra as a constellation specifically in many other videos in the past. But here I have highlighted uh, Lyra Sheliak there in pink. Uh, just to highlight her importance at this new moon. And I say her because she's a Venusian energy and she's very much connected to nature. 
a little bit south of Chiliac there, you see that little yellow circle M57. That is the Lyra Ring Nebula that we've talked about many times before. Uh, that is associated with seeding souls that have uh, association or heritage with the human race. And that is um, energy that is associated very much with polarity and history of galactic uh, wars uh, that generated polarity energy. And if we take also the more feminine Lyra fixed stars associated with, for example, Vega there. Lyra Vega is one of the most prominent uh, influences of spiritual practice from a feminine standpoint. And, and then we have further north there, Alatfar, Lyra Alatfar, that is associated with music, sound, uh, light language. And uh, many of us have experience uh, and soul heritage with Lyra Alatfar that are drawn to sound and energy, uh, healing, light language, all those kinds of practices. So at this time, at this new moon, we are invited to integrate our experience with nature, uh, body, mind, spirit type of heightened awareness, because Part of it is that we're uh, grounding ourselves uh, to allow new ways of living in the future to be uh, coming through us. And it requires us to be here on earth, grounded, uh, so that we can experience a physical uh, change to our environment as well as our spiritual experience. So I feel we are going to be asked a lot of questions by our environment. Are we following with the natural flow of evolution or are we working against it? Uh, we can ask ourselves those questions just by looking at our own life. Am I resisting things uh, in my life? Or am I flowing with the natural rhythm of my life? So that's a very good question to ask ourselves at this time, as suggested by this new moon. All right, so let's take a look at the next energetic theme that I called authentic self-expression. So here we have the second theme that I've called authentic self-expression. And the highlight on this topic is brought in by, first of all, Venus as the ruler of this new moon, but also by Mars and his opposition there to supergalactic center. But let's start with Venus, because Venus is opposing the fixed star Acrux at 12 degrees of Scorpio. And Acrux is uh, associated with um, mystery, a very expansive energy uh, is associated with water as well. So we talked about Acrux in the past, and that was in conjunction with the lunar eclipse in Taurus on October 28th, 2023, when Jupiter was in opposition to Acrux before. So there is a link here between um, this energy from Acrux now Venus is here to pick that up. And Acrux is also associated with water and the unseen forces. So uh, this is a very important guidance from Venus now being here and Acrux to uh, expand our sense of mystery and unknown forces and our awareness of that. Venus is also making a trine to Lyra Alatfar at 10 degrees of Capricorn. And also Alatfar is in a position to conjunct uh, the dwarf planet Quawart at 9 degrees of Capricorn as well. So that's a beautiful combination because Alatfar is associated with energy around light language, music, sound, all the mastery that comes from tuning into those vibrations. And Quawar, as a dwarf planet, carry an energy of spirit consciousness, how we can play 
with uh, our life force energy, not only within, but with nature as well, tuning into uh, nature's vibration and turning that into a spiritual practice. So this is very strong guidance that Venus carries with all her aspects here to Lyra, Alathfar, Kwawar, and Acrux at this time. The second part of this theme is brought in by Mars, and Mars is at five degrees of Aries, which is right in opposition to the lunar eclipse point we just had at five degrees of Libra, conjunct the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. This is a powerful alignment for coming into uh, action when it comes to uh, a futuristic vision, because Five degrees of Aries, where Mars is now, is also conjunct Alpha Reticulum, which is associated with very futuristic, visionary uh, energy related to what's to come. And Mars is also making a square to Ixion at five degrees of Capricorn. Ixion is that a dwarf planet that brings in the seeker consciousness and the desire to move into the future, uh, being a seeker of our own authenticity, what works for us, basically. And the authentic self is at the center of how we move into the future and the authenticity and the bliss that comes from living in transparency between nature, our environment and within is very much represented by that uh, Ixion dwarf planet. And the square that Mars is making here is suggesting to us to to grow into our authentic self-expression. And now is the time to do so, channeling the connection with a multidimensional perspective through the supergalactic center there. So this is a very uh, beautiful opportunity for growth. So I wanted to show you here some inspiration when it comes to Kwawar and Ixion and the energy associated. If we start with Kwawar here to the left above my head here, that is that spirit consciousness that brings us together with nature and brings spirit into uh, the natural or physical plane. And we can see here the, the excitement, the dance, the singing. Kwawar is focused on bringing uh, spiritual practice into our lives and also expanding that sensation of connection to nature, to our environment, to life here on earth. And Kwawar is the what we call the higher octave of Jupiter. So it's a very expansive energy. Now, Ixion also comes with a seeker consciousness, finding out what is my best direction and how can I do this the most authentically and being independent of uh, others' opinions. And this is a, a very probing energy that is expanding us into our most truthful self. And Mars here squaring uh, Ixion at this time is that growth opportunity that we're asked to be part of. Ixion is that rebellic wild child that wants to do it their way. And that's an element of growth as well, to have the courage to step into our world just the way we are. And here I'm bringing back Lyra and uh, the trine there from Venus to Lyra Alathvar is the flowing energy around tapping into light language, for example, or sound or uh, any type of vibration that has to do with music. And again, highlighting uh, Acrux here that is in opposition to the ruler of this new moon, Venus, and the importance to tap into the fluid energies of the unseen here. It's actually also uh, very much highlighting water as an element and uh, amphibian type of abilities that we have, the, the interface between water and earth here. So here at this new moon, we're invited to uh, bridge, to be that bridge between uh, our intuition and the earthly. 
So all this taken together in theme two, authentic self-expression, how can you encourage that expansion at this time? Perhaps it's part of your new moon intentions to tap into some of the practices that you have not uh, tapped into yet, but you're drawn to. Uh, this is an expanding moment, uh, which is full of support to expand our spiritual practice at this time. We're invited to include nature and our connection to the elements to a higher degree in our daily lives and our practices to ground and balance ourselves. So here we have the third theme that I've called ramp up your spiritual gifts. And this theme is anchored in the heavy hitters such as Neptune, Pluto, but also in the ingress of Sedna into Gemini and also Homea now at seer degrees of Scorpio. So we have some significant shifts in the works. And if we start with Neptune here, Neptune is conjunct the constellation Pegasus and the fixed star sheet. And we've talked about uh, the fixed star sheet before, but just to summarize, this is a energy based in the sense of freedom. Pegasus is that flying white horse that comes with uh, the sense of freedom and how we are invited to fly higher in our lives and very much associated with Neptune's uh, guidance here into our spiritual selves over the years. But now so here we have Neptune who just uh, stepped into that 29th degrees before this new moon and will stay at 29 degrees until beginning of September, September 3rd. This is a, a important time, a, an important couple of months to really secure our sense of self when it comes to our spiritual self. And I want to highlight this long-standing sextile between the Pleiades star cluster at seer degree of Gemini, conjunct Sedna now, uh, and Neptune. That sextile has been a guiding force for a while. And we have a lot of guides from the Pleiades constellation and Pleiades star cluster with us. And it's highlighted specifically at this new moon is the... Uh, one of the fixed stars within the Pleiades star cluster called Electra. Elect Electra is associated with telepathy and especially te telepathy with the nature kingdom. So this is also guidance to start stepping into um, that connection to nature once more. Uh, it's been a consistent theme of this new moon to increase our connection with nature and Electra here in sextile uh, almost the exact with Neptune at this time is feeding and influencing us in this way the long-standing opposition of Neptune to supergalactic center is also prominent in holding this energy of a multi-dimensional perspective I want to highlight also Pluto now retrograde conjunct Aquila Altair, Altair being the inner uh, polarity, if you will, between uh, our ego and our relationship with the outer world and humility. This is a, a guidance to go within now, to come to terms with that polarity within ourselves, to uh, allow ourselves to live independently from that ego uh, influence that may not be always as uh, favorable to us. Pluto is also making a longstanding trine to the Pleiades star cluster and specifically the fixed star Alcyon. So Alcyon is associated with energy around sharing our own truth and also with self-love. So the guidance here from Pluto in retrograde is to come to terms and resolve that polarity that we may um, feel still. And Pluto's journey in retrograde here is going to involve being in retrograde until October 11th. But 
uh, in the midst here also entering back in Capricorn on September 1st. So this is a revisit of our own inner polarity in retrograde around our, e our relationship to our ego. And we're not done with this process until Pluto is back at two degrees of Aquarius in 2025 and February 2025. So this kite has been in place for a while, but it's a guiding energy overall that I want to highlight now with uh, Neptune entering the 29th degree, the last degree of the zodiac. But there is more because now when Neptune has stepped into the 29th degree, we also have Homea at seer degree of Scorpio. And Homea is conjunct Shapley Attractor at uh, two degrees of Scorpio. And Homea is also one of those guiding uh, new earth energies that we are enjoying uh, through her conjunction to the Shapley Attractor at two degrees of Scorpio. Now, this yod that we see is becoming more and more exact as Neptune is stepping into the 29th degree of Pisces here. So the emphasis on Pleiades the Pegasus constellation, but also the Shapley attractor uh, is adding to this guiding force and, and uh, that sits in the background here for us when we as we move forward. So Homea is that higher octave of Neptune bringing in new earth energy that has to do with rebirth, with uh, psychic insight, seeing the signs, all the different things that we've been talking about at this new moon is very highlighted in terms of tapping into mystery and the integration with nature, all the elements. Homea is the epitome of all of this taken together. So no wonder we have this powerful yod here pointing right at Homea, conjunct the Shapley attractor, the biggest universal driver that we know uh, of today. <laughs> so the also highlighting here uh, the role of the Pleiades star cluster in the guidance that we receive at this point as well. So this is a powerful um, energy that is really the foundation of Earth's development, our human development of humanity as well. There's really no separation between what goes on inside of us as opposed to outside of us and on planet Earth. It's it's all uh, intertwined. <laughs> so uh, I thought it was important to emphasize this theme of ramping up your spiritual gift, connecting with a bigger perspective of who you truly are and connecting also with the life force, the natural universal wisdom of the earth at this time. And here we have the Pleiades. And uh, to orient yourself, uh, you may be familiar with the Orion constellation there, Orion's belt. And uh, and if we look up there, um, Aldebaran is part of uh, one of the stargates that we are using uh, as souls for multidimensional travel. And uh, beyond that is the Pleiades star cluster. And here I have magnified the star cluster is seven different fixed stars. And today I have highlighted Electra and Alcyon uh, specifically. But uh, this is a very powerful um, place, a star cluster with um, great human galactic heritage that many of us have had our soul journeys have brought us here at some point. So if you're curious, check in your galactic chart if you have any connections to the Pleiades. And Pleiades is located, all of these stars are located at zero degrees of Gemini. So this new moon is a huge opening, a welcoming to become more of an open channel to connect with nature's life force and ourselves to be part of and that sensation of being part of it all it invites us to expand the talents and discover the gifts that we have naturally in um uh, seamlessly with what nature and our environment is offering us so we are invited to um, step into relying on what is unseen and connecting with that. 
we're invited to expand our spirit consciousness and seeking out our authentic self. This is a great invitation to follow our bliss and connect with and align with Earth's natural evolution and development and making it into a practice. So we had the first energetic theme that I called Earth Transformation, where that trine of the new moon to Lyra Shiliak is a, a very supportive opening to the reminder to stay connected to nature. And the Lyra constellation overall is highlighted at this new moon. The second theme of authentic self-expression with Venus and Mars aspects here to the dwarf planets Ixion and Quawar, giving us guidance on what to focus on next. And a third theme, ramping up your spiritual gifts uh, with the guidance from Homea and Pleiades star cluster, along with Neptune now at uh, 29 degrees and Pluto's retrograde that will permanently transform us when he's done in November for good for a very, very long time in Capricorn. So this is a very powerful new moon to set intentions uh, related to how you want to become a more open channel for universal wisdom and how you can align to your authentic self. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this Taurus new moon energy some more? The first question is, how can you further integrate this mind, body, spirit sensation within yourself? What are some of the lessons that you still need to learn to refine this relationship between mind, body, spirit within yourself? The second question is, who is your authentic self? And where do you feel most authentic? This is a question around an environment, a location that you may in the past have felt yourself completely. Go back to that location in your mind or physically to experience that uh, feeling that you once had of yourself being completely authentic. And then who is that person now? Uh, this is a, a deep question, but your authentic self is where your power sits. And the more we can express our authentic self just the way we are, the more we feel aligned with our truth. The third question is, what are your spiritual gifts and talents? And this is a question that I am inviting you to go outside the template or expectations of the past of what is a spiritual talent or gift. We all are spiritual people. We are a spirit in a human body and we all have spiritual gifts and talents. This is a question to go on a discovery, on a little adventure to discover more how you perceive the unseen and how you receive messages, how you receive signs that are given to you. So this is an invitation to go deeper with where you're at at, the, at this time. Thank you for watching and listening to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Visit me on my website, orikasullivan.com. And are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon with another one. Bye.